All right. So this is a game. Uh, let me just kind of fix the audio here. These are a little, little bit too quiet. Um, this is Planescape Torment, um, Enhanced Edition on Steam. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a full series or not. I was just kind of in the mood to maybe start this game. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's jump right in. All right. So we got our nameless one right here. I, I when I play this game, I tend to play him primarily as a. If I remember correctly, that's what he is. spend the night in this bird. Oh, he's in the buff. Name's Morty. He's trapped in here, too. Trapped? Yeah, since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I tried all the doors, and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. Locked in? Where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. Mortuary? Wait, am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty though. Looks like some bird painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place to laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back... Pauses. Say, looks like you've got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? Heh, <laughs> looks like you come with directions. Mark clears his throat. Let's see. It starts with... I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of st stick wash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. Parod can fill you in on the rest of the chant, if he's not in the dead book already. Parod? Does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Pauses. Let's see. Goes on. Don't lose the journal or we'll be up the sticks again. Whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happened to you. I'll put you on a quick privilege to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Perrod. No wonder my back hurt. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me, was there one with me while I was lying here? More. No, you were stripped of the skins. You were, st <laughs> you were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, look like you got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Perrod? Do you know him? Nobody I know. Then again, I don't know many people. Still, some burg's gotta know where to find Perd. Uh, once we get out there, that is. How do we get out of here? More. Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. 
Chances are one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses. Yeah, the mortuary keepers use the dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless, and won't attack you unless you attack first. Is there any other way? I don't want to kill them just for the key. What do you think it's going to do to hurt their feelings? They're dead. But if you want a bright side to this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before their keepers rise them to get the work again. Alright, well, I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. Alright, I'll look for one. One last thing. These corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a bad area. They start getting an edge on you. Remember, you can run. They can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. Alright, thanks for the advice. I already know how to play. Alright. I've played a lot of this game. Um, for... Sorry, just making sure OBS was working. Um, I'm very familiar with this game, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Uh, it's been a while since I've played Planescape. I just kind of wanted to open it up, kind of refresh myself on it. So, if this becomes a series, great. If not, don't be surprised. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now, go get those corpses. Don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. <laughs> Maybe you could help me, Mort. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. <laughs> Alright then. Alright. First, let's actually arm ourselves with the scalpel. Playing a lot of Warhammer recently. Damn. Keep trying to move things around using the Alt key. I'm gone. I'm gone. Yeah. So. I'm a, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Dungeons and Dragons, as one might be able to guess. And uh, the Planescape setting is. Mo like absolutely one of my favorite settings if not my favorite setting and I'm definitely not alone in uh, in like wanting like a proper campaign book for the Planescape setting and like I get that um, 5e has mostly been focusing on the Sword Coast and Faerun and that's fine that's okay but holy shit, like, can we please get some books that aren't fucking like that for a while? Done. Alright. So. I've been wanting a, a like a proper Planescape setting, or like a fucking Spelljammer setting. I don't know. S some advice, Chief. I'd keep quiet from here on. I need to put more corpses on the dead book than necessary, especially the Fems. Plus, killing them might drop the caretaker here. Uh, I don't think you mentioned it before. Are the caretakers? Called themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis on the face. They're an adult bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. You believe everybody should die. Sooner better than later. I'm confused. Why do these Dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the Dusties believe everyone's gotta die. Sooner better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the dead book than out of it? Uh, the corpses I've seen here, where do they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Okay. 
I'm not gonna ask why not to kill the female corpses. I know why. Uh, alright, I'll try to remember that. I'm sure you know why too. Um, look chief, it's obvious that you still got, you're still a little addled after your kiss with death. So I got two bits of advice for you. If you got a question, ask me, alright? Alright. Uh, sir, let's see here. Uh, second, if you're that as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. If I had a journal, I'd supposed to have it with me, I'd do that. It's our new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here. To last you. Hmm. Alright, it couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one then. You need to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things, like who you are, more importantly, who I am, <laughs> use it to refresh your memory. Alright, I got Updated it. Updated my journal. So, real quick. I... Trying to trying to remember. Mm. Trying to trying to look up how to run. He said it earlier, and I just assumed that I remembered, but I don't. Oh, it's middle click. Okay. Chief, what are you doing? I was gonna talk with the scribe. He might know something about how I got here. Look, rattling your bone box with Dusty's should be the last thing. Before Mark, could, before Mark can finish his rant, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spell dies down. The scribe's breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. And especially, we shouldn't be swapping the chant with sick dusties. Come on, let's see this place. The quicker we give this place the laugh, the better. Before the more can finish, uh, the scribe's gray eyes flicker to you. The weight of years hanging heavy upon me, restless one, he puts his quill down. But I do not yet count deafness upon my ailments. Restless one, do you know me? Know you? There's a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you know yourself, he said in a moment. For you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? As always, the question, and the wrong question as always, he bows slightly. The movements suddenly send him into a bout of coughing. I, he pauses for a moment, and catches his breath. I am dull. Perhaps you can answer some questions for me, doll. Updated my journal. Very well. What do you wish to know? What is this place? You are in the mortuary. Mortuary, rest this one. Again, you've come before you can finish. Doll breaks into a cough. Bit. After a moment, he calms himself. His breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. This is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadows of this life. Tell me about the mortuary. 
This is where the dead are brought to be interned or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead. Those who have left this shadow of life and walked the path to true death. Paul's voice drops in concern. Your wounds must have exalted a heavy toll if you do not recognize this place. It is almost your home. Shadow of life. Yes, the shadow. You see, restless one, this life is not real. Your life, my life, they are shadows. Flickerings of what life once was. This life is where we end up after we die. And here we remain, trapped, caged, until we can achieve the true death. What is the true death? True death is non-existence, a state devoid of reason, sens sensation, passion, bell coughs and gives a ragged breath, a state of purity. Uh, sounds like oblivion, why would anyone want that? Is it worse than remaining in the shadow of what life once was? I think not. Tell me more about the matri- the mortuary. Uh, dustmen? We dustmen are a faction, a gathering of those of us that recognize the illusion of this life. We await for the next life and help others on their journey. Perhaps you, you can explain why the dustmen want me dead? Thal sighs. It is, says, it is said that there are souls that can never attain, attain the true death. Death has forsaken them and their names shall never be penned in the dead book. To wake from death as you have suggests that you are one of these souls. Your existence is unacceptable to our faction. Unacceptable? That doesn't sound like it leaves me in a good position. You must understand your existence is a blasphemy to them. Many of our faction would order you cremated. They were aware of your affliction. You're a dustman, but you don't seem to be in favor of killing me. Why not? Because forcing our belief upon you is not just. You must give up this shadow of life on your own, not because we force you. Del looks about to break into another coughing gag and manages to hold it in with some effort. As long as I can remain at my post, I will protect you, your right to search for your own truth. What is your post? I am a scribe, caretaker of all of the shells that come to the mortuary. Doll coughs again, then takes a deep breath. As long as the steam of corpses flows through the mortuary, I will remain at my post. Sounds like you yourself are immortal, my friend. Sigil. Sigil is a fair city rest this week. Yes, the wounds that decorate your body. They look like they would have sent a lesser man to the, along the path of the true death. It seems like it, it seems as if many of them have already healed. They'll cost Island for a moment and steadies himself. But those are only the surface wounds. Only the surface wounds, what do you mean? Updated my journal. Speak of the wounds of the mind. You've forgotten much, have you not? Perhaps your two wounds run much deeper than the scars that decorate the surface. Dog coughs again. That is something that only you would know for certain. Uh, how did I get here? Dahl snorts in contempt as if he finds the memory repugnant. Your moldy chariot ferreted you to the mortuary restless one. You think you were royally blessed on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon the cart that carried you. I arrived here on a cart? Updated my journal. Yes, your body was somewhere in the middle of the heap. Sharing its fluids with the rest of the mountain of corpses, Dahl breaks into another violent fit of coughing, finally catching his breath minutes later. Your chestnut, there it was, is always pleased to accept a few moldy corpses to dump on the lot of you at the mortuary gate. 
Who is this ferret? He is a collector of the dead. Draws a raggedy breath and continues. We have such people in our city that scavenge the bodies of those that have walked the path of true death and bring them here so that they might be inherited property. Where can I find this ferret? If even the... If events persist as they have, rest this one, you, are much, you have a much greater chance of Ferret finding you and bringing you to us once again before you find whatever ooze puddle he wallows in his time. Nevertheless, I must find him. Slight wooden creeps into Dahl's tunnel. Don't seek out Ferret, rest this one. I am certain that it will that it will simply come full circle again. With you, none the wiser, devote a few coppers richer. Except death, rest this one. Do not per perpetuate your circle of misery. I have to find him. Do you know where he is? Updated my journal. Dolls are silent for a moment. Then he finally speaks. He seems to do so openly. I do not know under which gutter some fair liars at the moment. But I imagine that he can be found somewhere beyond the mortuary gates in the hut. Perhaps someone there will know where you can find him. Thank you. Uh, are you okay? I'm close now to the true death rest this one. It will not be long before I pass beyond the, the eternal boundary and find the place I have been seeking. I tire of this mortal spear, dog is a raggedy, a ragged side. Plains hold no more wonders for such as I. The eternal boundary. The boundary between the shadow of life and the true death. I don't want to ask him, like, I don't want to say, like, I can help you. Because if he wants to die, that's his choice. But. I do think it's strange that he's, like, as long as bodies keep flowing, I'll be here. But also, I'm gonna die soon. I'm like, which is it, doll? Uh, do you know how to get out of here? Hmm. The front gate is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone other than dustmen pass. Doll breaks into a ragged cough, then continues. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it, but it is unlikely he will open it for you unless you are extremely persuasive. Or I murder him. I see. Okay. Uh, that'll be it. Thank you for the information. As you turn to leave, Dahl speaks. Know this, I do not envy you, restless one. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I would not I could not bear. You must come to terms with it. At some point, your path will return you here. He coughs. Sound rattling in his throat. It is the way of all things flesh and bone. And perhaps we will meet again, doll. Yeah. All right. So, I love one of my favorite things in uh, the Planescape setting is all of these um, all of these factions with all these different like philosophies they're just they're so interesting Let's see here oh you know what I, sh I should be goes well, at some point I should be playing uh, through Baldur's Gate with my girlfriend and perhaps even uh, some other friends. And I would love that. They they know at this point like how much I 
both love the Baldur's Gate series, and the fact that they're willing to play through the game with me is is incredibly sweet of them. Um, and I'm I'm sure, like, if you've been watching my content for a while, you probably noticed that it's been a while since we've continued Undertale and Omari, and like, I've been meaning to continue those series for like a while now, but I've just it's been hard getting everybody together and like wanting to stream and whatnot because school's been quite the uh, quite the drag or something like that, but it's okay. It is it is a okay because at some point, um, uh, like a couple weeks from now, uh, I should I should be taking the summer off and I want to uh, get through those series with uh, my friends. Um, so maybe maybe once that's done, uh, we will do the uh, Baldur's Gate thing. Or we might even start it before then. Who knows? And like, while I'm on the topic of like playing games together, um, at some point I would love to record uh, some like D and D sessions, like start a start a campaign with the intention to like record it and put it on YouTube for other people to enjoy. But once again, that requires more more time and coordination than just me playing the game by myself or with like one other person. Seems like everything's fine. I'm also gonna, you know, like, fucking save the game. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll do a full playthrough of this. I, I have a habit of, like, starting games and, like, not finishing them. But, like, I've been wanting to, uh, return to, um,. long dark at some point because I I love that game I'm gone like I've been I've been doing a lot of uh, like one-off games particularly like um, like nostalgic games where I'm just like going back and playing like uh, like GameCube games from my childhood and that's that's been fun. I'm gone one like fucking ungodly or whatever then I really don't blame them. Oh fuck. As long as they don't stop me they can't talk to me. It's a big ass cremation thing. 
Alrighty. Dustmen are gonna fucking hate me from here on. Good job. appears to be some sort of message the skeleton and the mortuary was supposed to deliver. This is the third and last request for the pry bar. If it has been misplaced, tell me and I shall go to the hive mark and purchase another. I have no objection to maintaining the contracted workers. I've been trying to repair the skeletons. The bolts are wedged in so tight I can't get them out. Also, some of the locks on the storage cabinets on the third floor have been stuck again due to the heat. I need the pry board to snap them open. If the pry board indeed is lost, I will see about procuring the services of a locksmith having your cabinet locks replaced. Hearing this matter would be appreciated. An unreadable signature has been scrawled beneath the message. Alright, so there is apparently a pry bar somewhere to like bust these open. Fuckers, have you seen that? 
I haven't touched this game since like 2018, 2019, so. That's the NPC I was talking about. Sunction flesh around her cheeks and neck make her appear as if she's starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with a single, uh, with a finger. Get you guys a wire here. Greetings. The woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are talons, and they are darting in and out of the corpse, the corpse's chest cavity like knives, removing organs. I said greetings. The woman makes no response. I think the dusty chit might be short of the hearing, Chief. Let's lay off, shall we? What's with your hands? Updated my journal. Yeah, she's a tiefling, Chief. They got fiend blood in their veins. Usually because some ancestor there shared knickers with one demon or another. Like some addled in the head. An addled looking too. Uh, I'm gonna tap her and get her attention. The woman jumps and whips around his face you. Her eyes are a rotting yellow with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from surprise to irritation. She frowns at you. Greetings. Hmm. She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward squinting as if she can't make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly near sighted. You. She clicks her talon fingers together, making a strange motion with her hands. Find thread and embalming juice. Bring them here. To Evine. Go. 
go, go. You've been assigned a quest. I have those things. Updated my journal. And this is why we got those things. Uh, without missing a beat, Abine snaps the thread from your hands and hooks it around one of her talons. Then begins sewing up the corpse's chest. Then she takes the embalming fluid and adds a layer to the corpse. Wait. In minutes, she is finished. She clicks her talons, then fade to face you. You're surprised she extends her hand and drags her talon along your arms and chest. Uh, it's not that I'm flattered, but... Looks like you got a new friend, Chief. You two need some time together, or... Stow it more. She traces your arm and chest. You suddenly notice she seems to be examining your stars. She withdraws her talons, licks them twice, then bends forward and examines some of the tattoos on your chest. Hmm. Who writes on you? Hivis do that. No respect for zombies. Zombies, not paintings. She sniffs, then pokes on your scars. This one, bad shape. Mini scars. No preserves. Now wait. Talon suddenly hooked on into the thread you brought her, and lightning like she jabs another talon into the skin near one of your stars. Feels barely more than a pinprick, but it looks like she's about to start stitching up. I'm letting updated her work. my journal. Sensation is curiously painless as Evie begins to stitch up your scar. She's done, she sniffs at your frowns, then dabs her finger into the embalming fluids within minutes you has dabbed your body with the fluids, and strangely enough, it makes you feel better. Let it work. This may be the second time in my life I'm thankful I don't have a nose. Bean puts the last touches on your body, gives you another sniff, nods, and makes a shooting motion with talons. Done. Go. 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 And with that, we get a nice little bonus to some stuff. And... She's a very interesting NPC. Where am I gonna go? Fuck off, zombie. I wanna get out of here. That one won't have anything against us, I guess. that I'm not going to fight. I'm just going to run by them as quickly as possible because they hit like a fucking freight train. Like, they will kill me in like one or two hits. In fact, I think I'm entering a room in which they are in. Yup. So, we're going to get the fuck out of here. There we go. You see a strikingly beautiful ghost from before you. Her arms are crossed, her eyes are closed. She has long flowing hair and a gown that seems stirred by some ethereal breeze. As you watch, she stirs slightly and her eyes flickers. Greetings. You! What is it that brings you here? Have you come to see firsthand the misery you have wrought? Perhaps in death I still hold some shred of use for you. My love. My love, do I know you? Makes a begging motion with their hands. How can it be that the thieves of the mind continue to steal my name from your memory? Do you not remember me, my love? The ghost stretches arms. Out of her arms, think. Her voice becomes desperate again. Nay, there are most of folks so I think I feel the stirrings of memory. Tell me more. Perhaps your words shall change. The shadows from mine. Oh, at last, the fates show mercy. Even death cannot chase me from your mind, my love. You not see? Even 
Your memory shall return. Tell me how I can help you. Do you know, can you tell me? I know where I'm at. You know who I am. You're, bo you're one both blessed and cursed, my love. And you are one who is never far from my thoughts and heart. Bless and curse, what do you mean? The nature of your curse should be apparent, my love. Look at you, she points. She, death rejects you. Your memories have abandoned you. Do you not pause and wonder why? I'm still trying to get my bearings, actually. What else can you tell me about myself? I know that you once claimed you loved me, and that you would love me until death claimed us both. I believe that, never knowing the truth of who you were and what you were. And what am I? You... I cannot... She suddenly freezes, and she speaks slowly, carefully, as if her voice frightens her. The truth is this. You are one who dies many deaths. These deaths have given the knowing of all things mortal, and in your hands lies the spark of life and death. Those that die near you carry a trace of themselves you can bring forth. Zora speaks his words. A crawling sensation wells up the, in the back of your skull. You suddenly feel compelled to look at your hands as you lift as, as you lift it up and look at it you can see blood coursing sluggishly through your arm pouring into your muscles and in turn giving strength to your bones updated my journal and you know Dormora's rights you suddenly remember how to coax dearest spark of life from a body and bring it forth thought of both horrifies and intrigues you. No. Uh, remember how to raise others from the dead to access this ability. This ability from the quirks you use this on a party member that died in your presence. It will not work on anyone who does not shop with you. It will not work on party members you remove from the party while they are dead. I, I had other questions. Where are you? I need to escape this place. Can you help me? Leave. Just in the reason, leave. You ask me who had tripped here because of you had to leave this place. Uh, I am in danger. Can you guide me to a place of safety? I shall return. I. Um. Uh, danger. Of course, my life, I'll aid you in any way I can. Perhaps there is a way. So, so many doors. Try from a ride. Portals means a okay, portal. Portals are holes in existence leading to dimensions in the inner and outer planes. You could find you could find the proper key, you could escape through one of them. Key. It's more as if attempting to remember. Portals will reveal themselves if you have the proper key. Fortunately, these keys can be almost anything. A motion, a piece of wood, a dagger of silvered glass, a scrap of cloth, a tune you helm to yourself. I fear that the dustmen are the only ones who know the keys that you could use to leave their hall, my love. Let's see. I shall return. Farewell. Hold a moment. I learned much when I traveled with you, my love. And what you have lost, I have retained. I have not divulged all I will know to you. My sight is clear. While as you fumble in the darkness, I first spark a thought. And what is it that your sight sees that I cannot? Time itself relaxes its hold as the chills of oblivion slowly claim us, my love. Glimpses of things yet to come swarm across my vision. I see you, my love. I see you as you are now, and are quiet. What is it? What do you see? I see what lies ahead for you. It ripples through the plains, stemming outwards from this point. Shall I speak of what I see? Tell me. Alright, so this is a very important point in the game, and it happens very early on. 
if what she is saying is true, and this is the Nameless One's love, he's going to make a vow to her to either save them or join them. This is what my eyes see, my love, unfettered by the shackles of time. You shall meet enemies three, but none more dangerous than yourself in your full glory. They are shades of evil, of good, and of neutrality, given life and twisted by the laws of the plains. You shall come to a prison built of regrets and sorrow, where the shadows themselves have gone mad. There you will be asked to make a terrible sacrifice, my love. For the matter to be laid to rest, you must destroy that which keeps you alive and be immortal no longer. Destroy what keeps me alive? I know that you must die while you still can. The circle must come to a close, my love. You are not meant for this life. You must find that which was taken from you and travel beyond into the lands of the dead. Die while I still can. Updated my journal. Do not doubt your ability to rise from the dead. I do believe that every incarnation weakens your thoughts and memories. You claim that you have lost your memory. Perhaps it is a side effect of your countless deaths. If so, what more will you lose in successive deaths? If you lose your mind, you will not even know enough to realize that you cannot die. You shall truly be doomed. Countless deaths, how long has this been going on? I do not truly know, except that it has gone on long enough. Alright. Farewell. I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. love. She smiles, but there is only sadness in it. She closes her eyes, and with an ethereal whisper, she fades. Back with me, Chief? Kind of drifted out on me there. I'm alright. Let's move on. Fuck off, big spooky skeleton man. I'd rather fight these dudes than the big ass bone walkers in the other room. Done. You have any copper on you, buddy? I'm gone. Is that a... Okay. So, looking for the door here. My goal is to get out of here and then I'll save and quit and end the episode. I'm gonna, speaking of saving, okay. Just trying to get out of here. Literally, no one else has to die. Except for this person, apparently. And this person. Damn. 
Oh, look at you. You're named. Officially trapped in the bird cage. Um, yeah, so that was fun. I I may continue this game, uh, especially now that I'm this far in. Um, I always get stuck at this part where I'm like looking around for this dude, and I always get sidetracked with other missions. But that's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. This is just a uh, game that I, I, I cherish very deeply. It's a very interesting game, and it was one of the games that uh, really influenced how I play D and D. And like, it, it's just it's a it's a really good game. Um, I would say that it's obscure, but it's really not. But if um, if you like isometric games and whatnot I highly recommend it um, yeah so I don't know what I'll be playing next maybe this more maybe I'll return back to Morrowind for a little bit because I want to continue that game um, yeah I, I think that's it uh, thanks for watching if you enjoyed this definitely check out uh, the other stuff on my channel Bye.